Och så uh, chilling like a villain and thought I'd shoot a little video. I don't have a whole lot to say and I always tend to ramble so we'll see where that goes. But uh, <clears throat> going to start another project here in the, uh, sometime soon and uh, I've mentioned a couple of times about my grain mill but I had a question for you all and I hope this walking around ain't too uh, make you too dizzy but I'll see if I can't stand still. Drinking on some uh, <clears throat> Frozen Toes IPA and some New Zealand IPA. Actually, the Frozen Toes, I got some bottled up for my first competition that's coming up. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, getting ready to do my uh, grain mill station. And uh, as you've seen in my previous videos, if you have seen them, I've bought me a barley crusher uh, with a seven pound hopper. And I had ordered a mill, a mill, a motor, a little AC motor. Uh, it was like 30 or 40 bucks, something like that. Pretty cheap. It's supposed to, according to the guys at Homebrew Talk and the ones that, that have done this, it's a direct drive motor and you see the little spider gear. Uh, I forgot what the torque rating is on. It's like 100, and, I don't want to tell no lie. I think 170 some RPMs, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember the specs on it, but I, I'll post a link on it. In my more info section that way if you want to look it up you can but um, what will happen is I'll take this base off of this uh, and then I'll mount the barley crusher just this part to this old uh, cart that we used to use upstairs um, that's been sitting down here collecting dust that I'm glad I didn't get rid of because now I can use it and it'll sit somewhere around in here after that wood base has been removed and then my spider coupling will connect to the uh, drive the shaft on this motor and I've got me a piece of metal here just uh, found a scrap piece at work and I haven't lined any of this stuff up yet I haven't done anything so I gotta figure all that out but I'll mount this piece of metal down and uh, mount the motor to that for stability and uh, coupling there and actually I've got it sitting backwards here and coupling there and uh, be good to go. But what I really want to talk about, because that'll be in a future video, um, I actually have used this barley crusher this past, yeah, this past weekend, this past Saturday, I brewed a um, another cashmere IPA that I really love, and for my buddy DJ, that really loves cashmere IPA, so I thought I'd hook him up. And I just used my um, regular plug in the wall uh, uh, drill to run my barley crusher and I could notice a huge difference you know I'm, I'm buying my grain uh, and uh, whole grain now I don't buy it pre-crushed as you like you say if you've seen my videos you've seen this and these bad boys are full of two row so I, I did I used my first I did my first crush myself this past weekend with my drill and the barley crusher is like 13 or 14 pounds of grain. Went really good and I could tell a huge difference in uh, crushing with the barley crusher and uh, the grains that I've been getting from basically kits that I've been buying, mostly from Austin Home Brew Supply. Uh, I think it's probably the place I've bought most of my kits from lately. Uh, <clears throat> big difference in the crush. And I had I have read that uh, that is you know, common that you're going to get a whole lot better crush with the barley crusher than you do from basically any type of uh, uh, place that sells online or hobby shops or whatever, unless you tell them to double crush it or whatever. But anyway, uh, got it all crushed and done the, you know, done the brew day Saturday. But one thing I ran into that I haven't run into before is a stuck sparge. And um, I'm doing this video off the cuff here, so I, I don't really have a thought process in mind of what I was going to say so bear with me but uh, usually what I will do is you know I obviously have my mash in at 1.25 quarts per pound and um, I'll boil off maybe two or three quarts until it gets clear and then uh, I've slowed down my first runnings to not really a trickle but you know I, I've slowed it down I used to just open it up and it seems like I'm getting a, a little bit better efficiency if I just, you know, maybe do my valve about halfway. So that's what I've been doing. Well, after I do my first run-ins, you know, I do my batch sparge. 
Well, this time when I did my batch barge, I just done a single batch barge, and it was like four and a quarter gallons, maybe uh, four and a half gallons. It was somewhere around there, and it was a single batch barge. I dumped all that water in on my mash tun, my Coleman Extreme 52 quart mash tun, with the uh, stainless steel braid, and I've used it, you know, every time since I started doing all grain. Uh, <coughs> I don't know if the sunlight's messed me up or not. Um, before now, or up until this last batch, when I did a batch sparge, um, you know, I would dump the water in there, whether it was a single batch sparge or double batch sparge, stir it up real good, and wait 10 minutes for the grain bed to settle, uh, do a boil off again, and then just open the valve up and let it rock and roll. I think one time I'd done it really slow, uh, just to see if I could get my efficiency up, and I think it did, but I, you know, I there's just so many variables and all that and and so many things can happen here and there but i've always gotten good, pretty good efficiency from a mash and uh where i lose efficiency seems like it's in my boil but that's a whole different video uh, but anyway this time when i did my batch sparge i'd done the four and a quarter gallons whatever it was for this uh recipe i stirred it i let it sit for 10 minutes let the grain bed, grain bed settle and um, then I done my boil off, maybe like a quart, two quarts, or whatever. And then, as I have done several times before, I opened up the valve and let her rock and roll. Well, I noticed it was running off pretty fast, but I didn't really think anything about it. And I needed, I think I was at... Um, if I can remember my recipe, I think my first runs was like 2.75 gallons, maybe. I think that's right, 2.75 uh, gallons was my first runs, and this batch barge was going to be 4.25 gallons. So um, right at like 5 gallons, or which would have been, I, don't, I can't do the math right now, just a few minutes of running off the batch barge, bam stopped it just it was flowing good and just and i'm like what the crap I, I, I knew it was a stuck sparge but i didn't wasn't expecting it at all so i raised the lid on the uh, mash tun and looked you know looked in there and uh, i took my mash paddle and stuck in there and it was like sticking into a dirt you know it was it was hard as a brick so uh all i did was just close the valve and stir everything up really well let it sit for a few minutes let the grain base settle and then opened the valve again, done a little boil off to clear it a little bit, and uh, <clears throat> then just slowed down the um, the batch barge runoff for the remainder of that you know that time, and then and it was fine; it didn't get stuck anymore. So uh, I attribute that to the finer crush, um, and I've never experienced that before. So what I'm getting at is on a homebrew talk where I hang out a lot. I read a lot uh, other than watching YouTube videos about home brewing and there are so many different opinions and I've said this before about you know everything you do with home brewing there's so many different opinions about and uh, <clears throat> how fast you drain your mash ton during your first runs and during your batch barge is another one of those things that just seem like everybody debates back and forth so I just thought I'd throw it out there and ask you I mean maybe you don't visit homebrew talk homebrewtalk.com and I'll just ask my homebrew followers, um, how fast do you drain your uh, your first runs or your batch sparge, or if you do batch sparge? Or I know if you fly sparge, it's a whole different ball game. So I'm really not talking about fly sparging because I know that's that's got to go slow. But uh, <clears throat> a, a lot of people that are real experienced brewers have uh, I have read that when they batch sparge and they do their runoff, that they just open the valve wide open. Well, I I don't know if I just, maybe I just needed to uh, have let it set longer and let the grain bed settle more before I opened it up because obviously it channeled and got a stuck sparge somehow. So you tell me or just give me your experience. And um, from now on, I'm either going to, since it's not that big a deal, like I don't have a manifold where some people have problems, you know, trying to stir it and, and, and their manifold gets all uh, messed up or whatever. Since I do have stainless steel braid, um, I may just let my grain bed settle longer 
uh, since it's a finer crush. And I know there's stuff you can add like wheat or whatever and I, I, adjuncts. And I really don't want to get into all that. I want to start doing that. So I will either start letting my grain beds settle longer and hope that fixes the stuck sparge or I'll just slow it down, which, you know, just got to be patient. And uh, if I need to slow down, I'll just slow down, which might help my efficiency anyway. But And I didn't mention this. I think with all my um, all green batches, I've nailed my efficiency once, and uh, the rest of the times it's been, you know, around 65 to 70 percent. And uh, with this, uh, using the barley crusher, uh, it was spot on 75 percent. I hit my numbers really well. So, uh, some people I've seen when they went f from uh, pre-crushed grains, like from you know the homebrew supply store or whatever to doing their own they've jumped up to 80 some percent or whatever right and I, as long as i can get 75 percent and be uh you know consistent i'm happy so i think 75 percent is really good anyway uh throw it out there to me and uh, let me know what, what you think about uh stuck sparges and like i said i don't want to get into the whole fly sparging thing because i'm not going to go that route and i know that's a whole different issue altogether and a whole different technique so this is for batch sparging, and I am using a stainless steel braid, so, and I may just, like I say, I need to either let my grain bed settle longer than 10 minutes, or I need to just slow the drain down. So it'll be interesting to see what some of you have to say. And maybe in my next video, you will see the um, build of this bad boy, uh, if I can get my holes cut and uh, get everything lined up. And <clears throat> I was gonna brew, not this coming weekend, but next weekend, or maybe the next weekend so I've got a couple of weekends before I need to brew again I got a pretty good little pipeline going up pipelines rock uh, it's cool to have uh, three beers going and two waiting so that's cool later